on Two Wheels this week, some more of your favourite clips, including Jeff and Wayne riding some scooters, and Jeff enthusing about some old classics, plus some off-road riding and the bits you've all been waiting for, some new two-wheeled cock-ups. We're road testing today a poo. Oh, sorry, it's not poo, as it says on the sea, it's PGO. A PGO PMX 90 scooter. It's actually a bit of a off on road version. So I'm going to see if we can have a bit of fun on and off road. So, although this little baby was designed as an on-off-road machine, they forgot to put some lumpy, knobbly tyres on it. It's got 120 low-section, 12-inch road tyres. What the heck, it adds to the fun. So, 20 odd miles to the gallon, 40 odd miles to the gallon, 80 odd miles to the gallon. You'd think 80 was quite economical, wouldn't you? This is better, because this is a zero emission jobby. It doesn't take petrol as we know it, diesel as we know it, it's a plug in the ball jobby, electronic. In fact, there's more emission comes out of a cow's backside, stood in the field, than this will do in a year. I'm going to have a go of it and see what it's like. Speed camera there, catch me if you can. <laughs> the Malaguti Firefox F15 RR is an example of the new breed of scooter. Its name sounds like America's latest fighter plane and it even looks like something straight out of Star Wars. Streamlined and aggressive styling might look a bit too intimidating for Mrs Jones down at the local post office, but not to me or to Troy Bayliss of Team GSE Ducati. Because Troy's got one of these to whiz around the pits on, and so have VAR, the new F1 team. In fact, they've got eight of them. So why these racy scooters? Its 70cc liquid-cooled two-stroke motor is a peach. It sounds a bit like a chainsaw, but it pulls strongly, and with its automatic clutch and variable belt transmission, you can just wind it on and go. High speed handling on a bumpy road is though, shall we say, exciting. 60 miles an hour on a pogo stick is perhaps an exaggeration, and you do get used to it. But what do you expect with little wheels and at 92 kilos, half the weight of a CBR 600? Comfort wise it's fine. You're perched on it of course, but you soon get used to that, and the bodywork certainly keeps your kecks clean. You know, I saw him out of ride on a scooter and he bloody disappears and... Oh, nice to see you again. Thanks for coming back. Shut up, morning, will you? I've been enjoying myself on my little scooter and I've enjoyed every little bit of it. Good, I'm very pleased for you, Wayne. Will you, uh, hold on to them? Yeah. I'll get another one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no one else take this. What is the TRF to the people who don't know uh, and what do you get up to? The TRF is the Trail Riders Fellowship. It's a, a national organisation dedicated to the preservation of green lanes and un unsurfaced, untarmacked legal roads. So is it a massive organisation? Do you have loads and loads of members? No, there's about 2,000 members nationally and it's organised by county or by region. For right. example, in Lancashire we have some 40 or 50 members. Uh -huh. In Ribble Valley, which is also part of Lancashire, they have another 40 members. Right. I think the Peak District has three districts in it. Yeah. And it covers most of England and Wales, but not Scotland, because there's different laws apply in Scotland. Oh, right. Well, different laws as regards to using different parts of the countryside? Different laws applying to rights of way, right. yes. 
Right. Okay, so do you, it, it sounds rather like an owner's club in a way. It's a national thing, but there's branches throughout the country. Do you get together with other people and you go and visit them and they come and ride in your park? Yeah, very much so. We'll go and stay for a weekend with a group down in the south of England and they'll come up to ride with us in Lancashire right. and in Yorkshire right. or in the Peak District. Yeah. We've, I've just led a, a group over in the Isle of Man for a long weekend and yeah. Isle of Man's excellent for trail riding. Yeah, oh, I can imagine. Uh, well, what kind of people do you get? Do you, I, w I would imagine you don't get the boy racer, is that right? Yes, I think the odd boy racer that comes finds that perhaps it's not for him because one thing we're not doing is racing. Yeah. We're riding res responsibly and um, using only l legal roads, yeah. which gives us um, opportunities to see the countryside and yet sort of preserve the roads that we've got. And a great thing on an off-road bike, they should all have this massive advantage. One of these, an electric start. Easy. The riding too can be as easy or as difficult as you want to make it. You find your own limits and you ride within them. Nobody pushes you to go faster and nobody laughs when you fall off. And so, after lunch, we took our bikes up to 9,000 feet. Now, you wouldn't really expect to come to the Pyrenees and not find some snow. And it's not often you get chance to ride your bike through 12 inches of the stuff. And that's not how to do it. The idea is keep the weight on the back, keep the front wheel light, and that's it. Easy as that. Here's John scoring 10 out of 10 for artistic impression. Look at that, wonderful. Everybody did actually fall off, at least a couple of times, or got stuck. The great thing was, nobody got hurt and no bikes got damaged. And contrary to what these pictures would have you believe, I did actually make it across once or twice. Honest. So here is that commando of your dreams. This one, 1972, 750, only 17,000 miles on the clock. It'll cost you just £4,000. And what do you get for that? Great big motor, 750 vertical twin motor, iron barrel, alloy head, and this one, this is the isolastic engine, or isolastic frame if you like, because it was mounted in these mountings front and rear, rubber mounting to take some of those vibes out of it. Up the front end you've got what look like spindly forks now, but down at the bottom there, twin leading shoe front brake. No discs, no six spots, none of that business, brake shoes in there, as you can see from this linkage down the bottom operates that rod and pulls the shoes on both of them are actuated so you get a leading shoe and a trailing shoe and it should stop you with a bit of luck of course no british bike show would be complete without classic british metal beautiful rudges ajs's shiny sunbeams even a 1917 550 dispatch riders bike complete with a wicker basket there were two stroke dots mv augustas with phil reed even putting in an appearance some very weird scooters and of course some illustrious Vincents. But if you're in the market for rebuilding one of your classic machines, you need to get spare parts. And outside and inside the hall are ranges and ranges of spare parts, rusty ones, corroded aluminium, but nevertheless it's probably got that priceless component that you want. And that's the essence of the Bonneville. It's a bike to appeal to the traditionalists, the steam engine and narrowboat fan if you like. You can thrash them and they'll take it, but you're better off letting it burble rather than blast. The handling and road holding are a revelation. It's got a giant bicycle feel to it. The 19 inch front and 18 inch rear wheels and skinny tyres belong to a slower paced world. Likewise the cable operated brakes. They do the job, but with manpower not hydraulics to help you so it pays to plan ahead. And perhaps that's the real attraction. Just look at it. I mean, it's a classy bike, and it's got that certain 
rightness about it. Look at the front view, narrow and all tucked in. Equally, look at the back. Nice pea shooter silencers either side of that narrow Dunlop tyre. No excess baggage, just function. Well, you've heard of the Milky Bar Kid. How about the Milky Bike Kid? Not really me, it doesn't suit me, does it? But this little dot, 122cc, two-stroke engine, look at it, tiny little thing down there. That heaved around this little three-wheeler, designed to deliver milk in this case, but you could also have it as an ice cream wagon. In fact, everything, even a spare parts wagon, a little truck for taking bits and pieces around. So this is one three-wheeler, but there's another one behind me over there, which you've just got to see. Now, this is a three-wheeler like you've never seen before. In fact, I've got to look at the notes here. It belongs to a private collector, 1901, and it's a slinger, and it's a special. I'd say it's very, very special three and a half horsepower engine. Now just look at this engine. Now liquid cooling, all the Vogue, right? This is water cooling. Can you imagine this? All polished up and gleaming. Two wheels there, a brake on that second wheel I can see. Look at the carburetor way back there on a big rubber hose. An amazing thing. Now if you've got a modern sports bike today, or perhaps a Harley, you'll think you're gonna be noticed. If you had one of these, you would be noticed. <laughs> Well, that's the Classic Bike Show. Some absolutely fabulous bikes here, and I hope you've enjoyed the show so far. But at the end of the day, there is a competition to this to win the best bike in the show. And this is it. Vincent Grey Flash. Entered in the TT, immaculate condition, restored. A lot of time, a lot of expense, but a wonderful bike. You've got to meet that if you want to win best bike. Still to come on this week's show, some brand new two wheels outtakes. But first, and by very popular request, here's superbike racer Neil Hodson looking rather confused at Jeff's description of the power delivery on his Kawasaki. What about engine delivery? We hear a lot about um, the Ducatis and the way you can stunk out of corners and all the rest of it. This is a creamier power delivery, is it? And, yeah, you know. I've never heard that term used before, I mean, creamy. Right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, it's smooth, yeah, then, it's smooth. It. No, 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 I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, uh, it, cream it, with lumps in, then? No. Yeah, well, <laughs> if that's what you want to say. No, it, it is, it's very different to the, the Ducati. Yeah. It, um, it, these, these things, I can't move how much they rev. You know, when I first tested my race bike and uh, the team manager said, You've, I said, what do I rev it to? And he said, oh, about 14 and a half thousand. Yeah. And, and I was like, you what? <laughs> I was changing at like 11,000 on the Ducati. <laughs> Rolling. Are we rolling? Rolling. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but if you like the motocross style, and it is, it's very similar to a motocross riding position, then a tiger <laughs> cameraman's just fell over. Now then, having fastened that to the back of the bike, I don't as a matter. Yep, there's a near about a head. Now, do you remember that an American? By the name of the Un American, I'll just start that one again. Here is the petrol filler. How about that? Needs a key again. Nothing sort of really wondrous there. You just spin that off. Don't you, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Three hours later. <laughs> How did he get that off, Dan? Right. Oh, wait a minute. It, that's, that's right. Yeah, that was it. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Oh, it's pretty full enough then. Right, are we okay there? Yeah. 
Well, I think I've got it caught round my ghoulies. Born to be wild. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Turn the bars to one side, press on there, lift up the old flap, and there's your fuel filler cap. This is the latest offering from Triumph the 900cc Tiger which was actually launched back in 1992 but it's remained more or less unchanged until this update for 1999. One of the joys of motorcycling in this country is the wonderful British climate. You get out on your bike in nice leathers with the vents open and have a lovely day in the sunshine. But not today because it's absolutely down in Bristol so I'm staying in the car. And what have you got in here? You got an 1147, is it? What is it? What's the size of the engine? 1137, 1164, isn't it? That was good up to there, so. I'll be the prompt. <laughs> <laughs> 1137. <laughs> and some retro style chrome back wing mirrors, which are actually very good. You get more than a wing mirror full. Oh, which is actually very good. We can cut that there. I was going to say. I was just going to say something about you can see, you know, you can see what's behind you. <laughs> I'll stop there. And I'll carry on when the car's gone. Yes, I did say 1300. You'd have thought an XJR 1200 was perfectly big enough, but obviously not. So now it's a 13. But it is basically the same engine, just bored out, bigger pistons, stronger conrods, all the rest of it. And it's really the same engine as Yamaha using their FJ 1200. It's a Car coming again. I'm f***ed off now with this. <laughs> Tell me about the brakes, Jeff. <laughs> what about the exhaust? What do you think? Completely made up. It made perfect sense to me. Uh, makeup is my hair, all right, lovey. Gro like Grossman impression, because nobody would know that's who it f***ing is. <laughs> Paul, it's over to you. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing that. So how was that? I got the soul. I got the soul. I got the <laughs> Assholes! <laughs> I only asked. Oh, our, our souls. Oh, no. Honda have sold these, sold, sold these. No, stay there, Dan. La 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 la. Let's just turn to the engine for a moment because the engine is the triple, as everyone knows. But what they've done with this one, they've altered the cams, they've altered the fuel injection. What else have they altered, Dan? Fuel injection, cams, and engine management system. Three cylinders, as you know, the famous triple, but on this one, they've actually altered the fuel injection system, they've changed the cams, and they've altered the engine management system, or to give that extra torque in the mid-range. With this one, you've also got a very nice aftermarket pipe. Not strictly aftermarket, because it is Triumphs, but it'll cost you £368. Even the cows approve, as you can hear. Turning somersaults and circles is something I do regularly. Talking of turning, if we turn to other things, such as the engine, the three-cylinder is unique in itself, but on this one, they've actually altered the engine management system, they've changed the fuel injection, and it's got different cams. And it's all to give you that more rounded feel in the mid-range, that torquiness to it. This one's also got an optional. Paul is there with a fancy sports thing. Securities, there are loads of different types, as you already know. I mean, you've got your lock and chains, and you've got your disc lock, and you've got your sort of cable attached to a U-lock. 
But alarms, they're complicated. Even dummies like me can't understand alarms. And the problem we have is there's so many questions you can put forward because there's so many. That was a little <laughs> wait a minute, I'll start again. <laughs> what the f all this in that one? <laughs> the brakes, well, they stop you well enough. Uh, and in fact, they're not dissimilar to what you get on a 125cc machine. So they're bound to stop you quite well. The only th thing I must mention is the mirrors, although look very pretty, you can't see much more than your elbows. So, got to bear that in mind. Uh, maybe you could just swap them for longer stems. You can say, ah, oh, that's crap. Something else, it's all, no. and again, something else, it's got a very low seat height. As you can see, uh, <clears throat> and something else, it's got a very low seat height. And while I'm talking about the seat, see this little tailpiece on here, all that covers up is the pillion perch, and it is a bit of a perch, but you just take the seat off, unclip that, and it really is a two-seater. As I say, a bit of a perch there, but you get a little pillion rest. And I forgot what else I was going to say. What else was I going to say, Paul? Something else it's got is a very low seat height, which is very useful for those unless we say... Oh, <coughs> Something else it's got is a very low seat height, which is very useful for those of less we sell with blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And something else it's got is a very low seat height, which is very useful for those people of let's And something else it's got a very low seat height, which is very useful for those people of let's shall we say a short <laughs> And something else, as you can see, it's got a very low seat height, which is very useful for short people. <laughs> This is going to be a classic, this is. Okay. And something else, as you can see, it's got a very low seat height, which is very useful for those people of, let's, shall we say, a shorter disposition. But that's not to be uh, non-PC, as it were. But um, that, that would have worked. No, no, that worked okay. I'm not going to do that again. And on Two Wheels next week, Claire visits Mallory Park for some wheelies, stoppies, burnouts and things you'd never have thought possible on a motorcycle. It's the grand finale of this year's European Stunt Championships.